Hello again. I spoke yesterday about the news that Alex Belfield, who runs a popular YouTube channel and a subscription-only phone-in and news channel, has been sent to prison for five and a half years. Some people commenting here seem to think that I approved of this lengthy sentence. I don't. I think it ferociously long and wholly unjustified by the offences of which he was convicted. These amounted to sending a lot of emails and making many rude and unflattering videos about certain individuals, including the television presenter Jeremy Vine. I'm sure Belfield's activities were immensely irritating to those subjected to them, but I really can't believe that the victims were driven to the point of suicide or nervous breakdowns by his behaviour. He's a bit of a crank. I cannot for a moment think that anybody really believed that he posed any threat to anyone at all. So why did he draw such a long prison sentence? There are a number of reasons, and while I think that he's been treated with unjustified harshness, he has to a great extent been the architect of his own misfortune. Forget for a moment what led up to his trial, and let us focus just on what happened during the trial and its aftermath. During his trial, Belfield produced videos every day reporting on some of what had been said. I'm aware that the judge had given him permission to do this after Alex Belfield had claimed to be a journalist, but this was a truly terrible idea. His expressions on his face and the emphases that he placed on what was said when he read out the notes clearly indicated his own opinion on the evidence that he was talking about. It looked awfully like contempt of court to many people, and gave the impression that he didn't care really what anybody thought. This was one thing which gave a poor impression, and which he need not actually have done. Something he really should have done was to engage a lawyer to act for him in court. He chose not to do this, and it was a disastrous move. The judge didn't like it, and he created a bad impression by smiling when his victims were giving evidence. He examined a couple of witnesses himself when the court-appointed barrister had COVID and the judge constantly had to intervene because of the way that Belfield was conducting himself. What is acceptable on the stage of a music hall does not always go down so well at a Crown Court. The decision to stand trial in a Crown Court was, by the way, a bad one as well. This is very expensive and the Crown Court can impose longer sentences than the Magistrates Court. He had a choice of having the case he heard in the Magistrates Court, and he deliberately refused to do that. Had he plumped for the Magistrates Court, he wouldn't have ended up with five and a half years. The length of the sentence was partly to punish him for wasting so much time and money for the court. It should not be that way, but of course it is. Not offering any evidence at all was a catastrophic error, as was not going into the witness box. It was those two moves which made the jury think him guilty, and it made him look guilty to others as well. Most of us, when we see a defendant refuse to be examined on oath in the witness box, draw the same conclusion. We assume, almost as a matter of course, that the person's guilty and doesn't want to go into the witness box because of what might come out. Finally, after he was convicted, Belfield kept on broadcasting and showed not the slightest contrition. It was very much business as usual. Did the judge know this? I'm sure that he did. Had he heard about the fundraising and the fact that money had been there to pay for a barrister in court? I expect so. Right up to the very morning that he was sentenced, Alex Belfield was releasing videos on YouTube in which he was boasting about how much money he'd been making lately and how his VAT bill alone was £16,000, talking about trips to Las Vegas that he'd been making in the future and so on. 
if I were judge watching that, I might be tempted to myself say to myself, right, I'll show him. Part of the problem is that the judge in this case is very middle class, and Alex Belfield uses some fairly fruity language and is quite blunt and down to earth. I don't think that his videos would show him entirely to advantage to a high court judge watching them. Had I been him, I would probably have shut down my YouTube channel the day I was convicted and not tweeted anymore. That at least made, might have made it look as though I was a bit sorry. Instead, he just carried on as usual. In short, I think the sentence of five and a half years was grotesquely long, but really Belfield could have done a little more to avoid this dreadful outcome. He really hasn't helped himself by his behaviour. I'm saying nothing here about whether he was right in what he was saying or if he was justified in the way he carried on. I'm instead talking about how these things actually work. As a guess, I would say he could have at least halved this sentence and maybe avoided prison altogether if only he'd been prepared to backpedal a little and play the game.